lies ahead for the state legislature and how is northern Arizona managing its wastewater? Good evening and welcome to NAZ Today. I'm community anchor Kara Hammer. Thank you for joining us. Well, even though it's sunny and unseasonably warm out these days, it still is very cold at night and unfortunately every winter, some people die from exposure to the elements. Last week, a homeless Flagstaff man was found dead outside of a local shelter. There was room for him at the shelter, but police say he was intoxicated and didn't go into the building that night. Flagstaff police say it's a challenge sometimes helping these people. If they are coherent, then we'll, we'll talk with them. We'll try to explain the services available uh, in Flagstaff, such as the shelter, if they're not too intoxicated, or um, they can go to the uh, intake triage unit at the guidance center and be evaluated uh, and also get, gain bed space voluntarily if they want treatment for alcohol problems. Well, state politics are about to get a little bit more turbulent. Reporter Amani Payne has more. Well, it's an exciting time here in the state of Arizona as the 51st legislator began its second regular session at noon today. Now, it's already off to a busy start as brand new state Senator Carlisle Begay of District 7 has already filed eight technical correction bills. But let's go ahead and take a look at what some other local and state politicians plan to take on this legislative session. Jobs and getting people back to work, that's really my focus. Uh, last year we passed out of transportation and infrastructure a major waterworks restoration bill uh, that will create hundreds of thousand jobs across the nation. With the nation's current unemployment rate at around 6.7 percent, creating more jobs is key. However, learning the skills for these jobs begins in the classroom where Senator Chester Crandell thinks the focus should be this legislative session. I think my top priority this year is uh, uh, looking at the uh, funding formula for K-12 education. Uh, that formula has been in place since 1980 and we've had a lot of changes take place since then. There, the assessed valuation of the state has uh, really changed. Uh, it's not as uh, constant across the state as it used to be and so we need to look at how we do that. We have the charter school system that has come up and we fund them differently than we do the traditional schools and so we need to go back and, and look at uh, funding as the Constitution says as uniformly as possible and so I will be working on some legislation to uh, redo that funding formula. However, other city leaders feel they haven't been getting a fair cut of the deal regarding things such as the Highway User Revenue Fund and hope to make their voices heard this session. The HERF funds, the Highway User Revenue Funds, and we don't think the city, any of the cities, are getting their fair share of those funds. That's the money that we have always counted on to maintain our roads. And in fact, it has to be used to maintain roads. And so in the last, say, five years, we've had, you know, a third of what we need to maintain our roads. It's important to remember, however, at the end of the day, the primary job is to work on the budget. So all these other factors will be dependent upon that budget. For NAZ Today, I'm Imani Payne. Here in northern Arizona, many cities are dealing with how to manage their wastewater. The distribution of reclaimed water is one of the main issues. Recently, the Arizona Supreme Court gave the green light to the Hopi tribe to sue the city of Flagstaff for its use of reclaimed water to make snow at the Arizona Snow Bowl. Meanwhile, the city of Sedona has taken a different path to manage its resource. Kyle Benedict has this report. The treatment of wastewater is an important issue for many cities, especially here in the southwest. Much of the wastewater from the city of Flagstaff is treated here at the Wildcat Hill Wastewater Treatment Plant and then turned into reclaimed water. Reclaimed water is used for irrigation mostly of the golf courses in the Continental Country Club area. Uh, we do have the ability to provide reclaimed water into the reclaimed distribution system and any excess flow is discharged to the Rio de Flag wash. The amount of reclaimed water released into the Rio de Flag or used for irrigation varies from season to season. During the summer with uh, the irrigation demand, uh, we'll probably see well, at least one and a half million gallons a day going for reuse on the golf courses. And that leaves us with about a million gallons a day 
to maybe 1.5 million a day that's discharged to the Rio de Flag wash or available to supplement the reclaimed water distribution system, uh, which delivers water for irrigation throughout a large area of town. While the city of Flagstaff recycles a large portion of their effluent, down in Sedona, they're experimenting with new ways, including wetland development. We were receiving about a million gallons a day of sewage, which we treated and wound up with about a million gallons of water. In order to better manage the large amounts of effluent, the city of Sedona is using three different methods, irrigation, wetlands, and injection. Before the water is distributed into the wetlands, it goes through a long process to turn it from wastewater into reclaimed water. Irrigation is basically putting the water, spreading the water out on the ground, and then the plants will basically take that water out of the ground and through a process we call transpiration, basically release it into the air. The second method is the wetlands. And its major way of dealing with the water is through evaporation. So it's really effective during the summer. We have large open areas of water and basically it evaporates up. And we have some infiltration as well. The third method which we are looking at is injection. Injection is basically taking the water, the treated water, and putting it underground. Though they don't have any numbers now, Sedona city officials are hoping that the wetlands will bring added revenue along with more visitors. For NAZ Today, I'm Kyle Benedict. And in Israeli martial art appears in Flagstaff. Hi, I'm Terry Markson. As seasons change, so does the inventory at Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. To make room for the 2014 models, we're clearing the lot, and that means great deals for you on our 2013s. Right now, you'll find rebates up to $10,000 on select Chevrolet models. Choose from a full line of vehicles, including the totally redesigned 2014 Silverado 1500. You can always count on our same relaxed, no pressure environment. Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac, real hometown value. According to self-defense trainers, personal attacks in Flagstaff have been on the rise. And what better way to feel safe than by taking a self-defense class? Reporter Brooke Cowell went into a local studio to learn a few tricks that could come in handy in a sticky situation. No one ever wants to be put in a defenseless position. And Krav Maga is a way to teach you how to protect yourself. We went to a local workout studio to see if we could get more pointers on what to do if we were ever put in that situation. I'm going to drop my guard, shift over. This knee goes right here against his chest to keep him from coming in. My other foot comes up. I'm going to strike him in the hip flexor, keeping him off. Three, kicking him off. Getting up. If you were attacked, how would you handle it? What would you do? Flagstaff trainer Dan Pollocky tells us why Krav Maga was developed. Uh, Emil Lichtenfeld, 1930s, you're talking about Nazi-occupied Germany. He and a group uh, of Jewish men and women put together a group to help fight against the kind of the fascist thugs, so to speak, as Hitler was rising into power. The most important thing to know when being attacked is to shorten your freeze zone. So the freeze zone is really humans natural response when you're um, under threat or you're attacked most people the first thing that happens is they freeze they don't know how to respond and in that freeze zone is when things can go bad the trainers gave us a little advice on what to do and to know if ever put in that position so it's choked from the front the choke comes on i've got to go to the weakest part of his grip which is his thumb it's speed versus strength so my hands are going to come up in a hook right at the thumbs. When I do that, I'm going to give a simultaneous groin strike, just like that. Now he's released enough, I'm going to let go of his hand, punch him in the face, continue to assault him. Now I control him. Being aware is one of the main defense mechanisms a victim can use. Awareness, you know, we, we have a saying that we're always, we're always what ifing. If you're in a situation or you find yourself in situations and you're thinking, you know, what's, what, what could happen to me in this situation? What might possibly happen in this alley or in this person's vehicle or, you know, so to speak? Then you have a, a more of a state of awareness. Given that state of awareness, you will be able to master the techniques to fight back. You're not out of the fight unless you give up. So the most important thing that anybody should know if they are attacked is that you do not stop fighting until you're safe. 
For NAZ Today with videographer Tressa Tudrick, I'm Brooke Cowell. If you are interested in Krav Maga, there are classes Monday through Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30. For more information, go to naztoday.com. Well, there aren't many clouds in the sky today. Will this warm weather continue into the week? Stay tuned. I just got a house full of Suddenlink with an all new home phone service that can actually do tricks like send voicemail to email. It's your mother, call me. Automatically and pop caller ID onto my TV, giving new meaning to call screening. Hey. Plus, I got E911 to pinpoint our house and unlimited long distance to flatten our bill. Suddenly, the phone company seems cheesy because Suddenlink just reinvented home phone and made it look easy. Wow, sunny days one after the other today. Gorgeous Monday out there. High temperature 51 degrees, well above average. And it sounds like a broken record around here. We are now going into the fourth week straight of no precipitation here across Arizona. You have to go back to December 20th to find our last storm system. So yeah, it's starting to get dry around here. If you look at our precipitation since September 1, and that's kind of after the monsoon. The monsoon kind of in our rear view mirror. It's been dry around here about an inch and a half. Below average winter started off good, but it's been this pesky high pressure out in the Pacific that just won't go away. And this week it's going to be about, just about as strong as we've seen it here for the last several weeks. And here's a look at it centered right off the central California coast. Any Pacific energy well up over the top of it. And this thing's just going to migrate right across the western United States all week long. And it looks like it's going to be around for, I would say, a good week and a half or so before it even looks to possibly break down. So this high pressure just keeps anything in the Pacific from moving in our way. And we're starting to see a lot of drought indexes pop up across the West. All of California is in a severe to extreme drought here in Arizona, moderate drought across the state. 17 degrees for us overnight tonight, working on towards the full moon, which is still a couple nights away for us. 47 degrees forecast high temperature tomorrow, a little bit cooler than we were on Monday. I think we get a little bit of a northerly breeze, not a cloud in the sky, but temperatures down a little bit, still above average out there for us across the state tomorrow. So here's a look at the statewide temperature. Sedona 62, Prescott 58 degrees, Winslow 51, 75 degrees down in Phoenix. And so I nudge all the temperatures down a couple degrees under the northerly breeze tomorrow. Then we look at the extended forecast. I don't even put a cloud in there. And temperatures jump back up into the low 50s the whole way through with seasonably cool overnight. And for you down in Sedona, looking quite nice. Temperatures in the 60s each and every afternoon. And I've yet to get down there and enjoy some of this lovely unseasonable weather, but uh, it's looking tempting. I'm not complaining. I like these warmer temperatures. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people do, but um, I don't know. For me, it's getting a little old. Well, if you don't want to go outside, at least you could come inside tonight. The women's basketball team oh, hosts right Southern on. Utah. If you can't make it out to the game, you can check it out right here on NAUTV. It should be a good Big Sky Conference you'll, matchup. You'll be out there. I will be out All there. Right. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us.